Hello coders and thanks for joining us for part five of the, of the Unity Dynamic UI series. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be telling you guys how we can get our buttons spawning from our button brancher. Now in the previous tutorial I talked about how we were going to uh, set up our class, set up our script with uh, four main classes. The button scaler which is going to handle the multi-resolution aspect of our dynamic UI. Um, the the uh, reveal settings, the linear spawner and the circular spawner class. Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to talk about how we get our buttons to actually spawn. Alright, now let's first start off by noting that our button brancher script is going to have a button refs which is going to hold prefabs to our buttons. Okay, so if you look down here I have my prefabs for buttons and in it I have all the buttons that I'm going to be using for my button brancher. Now you can see that, uh, and this is going to be good practice if you're using this system, if you have branchers that are buttons, you want to make sure that they're labeled accordingly so that you don't get confused with which button is a brancher and which one is just a regular button. Okay. Now I also want to note that just because a button has the brancher script attached to it doesn't mean it can't have some functionality. You can still add on-click events to your uh, button brancher buttons. All right. Now that we have all of that cleared up, let's take a look at some other things. So here we're setting the mode. Um, of our button brancher and then we set the button reference size, the reference screen size. All right, and so all of this is going to be going into our script at this section. Okay, so under our classes we're going to be declaring all of these variables. So here we have our button reps array which is going to be holding our prefabs as I outlined right here. And then we have our buttons list which is going to be handling the additions and removal of our buttons, um, of our dynamic buttons. And so they're also basically everything that has to do with our buttons on the screen is going to be handled from this list. Okay, The only thing that button refs is for is so we can instantiate the prefabs and put them into our buttons list. Then we have some of our scale mode uh, variables which are going to be placed into our initialized for our button scaler, our initialized method. I talked about this in the previous tutorial so uh, we're setting the reference button size, we're setting the reference screen size and we're passing those as parameters. Uh, to our button scaler initialize method. Then we're going to initialize our classes which we talked about and then down here we have a float screen or a last uh, screen width and a last screen height. This is going to be used for ch uh, determining if our screen size has changed. Okay and so the way this works is down in my update method the first thing I do is I check to see if my screen width uh, is not equal to my last screen width and if my screen height is not equal to my last screen height. So if either of these is true, then I'm going to uh, reinitialize the last screen width and last screen height so it stays updated. And then I'm going to initialize my button scaler with my reference but button size and reference screen size. And these are the s these values are going to remain constant throughout the program. They're just reference sizes. And again, the reason I need to call this is because if you recall, if you recall, the the button scaler initialize method is going to uh, set our new button sizes and we need these new button sizes uh, to be able to change the size of our buttons dynamically at runtime so I'll go ahead and demonstrate this you can see that as I move the button or as I move the screen width uh, as I change it we're actually seeing the buttons change size as well if I bring it up nice and large you can see for sure that these buttons are definitely bigger than these buttons down here all right, and you can also notice that anytime I adjust the screen size, the buttons actually reinstantiate themselves, and I'm actually doing that right here. So each time the screen changes, I'm actually spawning the buttons again. All right. Now, don't forget that we need to change the uh, the distance um, for our circular spawner, and we need to change the spacing for our linear spawner, because if we don't do this, let's say we have a spacing uh, a button spacing of five. And if we scale our screen way down, then the spacing is going to look too big. Okay, so we need to change the spacing, and the distance is the radius for our circular spawner. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing in update. Now, some other things we do in update is first, we don't do anything unless we check that reveal setting is set to opening. And then down here, we have a safety precaution that says if the buttons haven't spawned, we're going to go ahead and make sure we spawn them. And then we have some switch statements. And the switch statements are just going to determine what our reveal styles are so that we can know what method to call that's going to move our button. So um, if our uh, reveal option is linear, then we're going to check the linear reveal style. Um, 
And if our option is circular, then we're going to check the circular reveal style. And both reveal styles for linear and circular are going to be sliding or fading. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Okay, so that's going to cover the update method. Now let's look at our spawn buttons method. The first thing we do is we set reveal settings opening to true. And then we set uh, reveal spawn, reveal settings spawn equal to true down at the bottom. And these variables, these booleans are just so I can keep track of what's happening. Is it open? Has it opened? Has it spawned? Uh, that's more so for my own um, security. All right, and then the, f the next thing we, that we do in the spawn buttons is we clear the button list in case there are already some in it. And so to clear the list, first we need to destroy everything in the list, and then we clear everything in the list so we can just access the dot .clear method, which is an extension of the list class. All right, and so what, the, what is this doing exactly? Why am I destroying the buttons uh, before I spawn them? And that behavior is um, nested right here. So as you can see, I just spawned some buttons. Now if I press the button again, it's going to remove these buttons, and it's going to spawn new ones in its place. Now, why do I do this? Okay, uh, the reason I do this is because I don't want the, the screen to get too cluttered with too many buttons. So if I click on this button, I expect the user is only going to want to do have something to do with the buttons it spawns. If the user presses another button on this branch, I expect him to only care about those buttons. Okay, so we don't want any sort of clutter going on. We want to keep it nice and tidy. All right, so that's the whole purpose of deleting before we spawn. Now the next thing I do is I clear common button branchers. All right, so let me explain this one. If we go back to Unity, I'm going to use my rectangular ones because I can demonstrate it a little bit better with these buttons. Okay, so check this out. Imagine for a minute, and this is actually true, that all of the gold buttons are going to be button branchers. All right, now notice that these two button branchers both have the same parent, which is this button right here. Now what the clear common button branchers does is if I click on this button, I have some buttons that spawn. If I click on another button brancher that has the same parent, it's going to clear this button brancher's buttons. Okay, So you can see it's deleting those buttons and spawning new ones. And again, this is for the same purpose I just described where we don't want there to be too much clutter on our button brancher, um, on our button brancher system. Uh, we don't want to overwhelm the player, although this is already a lot of buttons as it is, but this is just to demonstrate how it's going to work. So let's look at that clear common button branchers method. Um, as you might want to note, this gets called before any buttons get spawned. So let's look at it. Let's look at that real quick. Uh, so clear button, clear common button branchers. The first thing I do is I create an array for my branchers. And the way I fill it is by saying game object to find dot fit, find game objects with tag button brancher. Okay, so it's looking for all of the objects with that tag button brancher, and I set those already. Each one of my button branchers is going to have um, that tag. So you can see this button brancher has that tag, um, and then both of these button branchers have that tag as well. So if it has the button brancher tag, we're going to do something with that, and we're going to add it to the branchers array. Then the next thing I do is I loop through the branchers array using a for each loop and I check as I was talking about previously I check to see if this the the brancher has the same parent as the current brancher as the, as this brancher. Um, so if they both have the same parent uh, and again just so just so I'm reiterating and not confusing anybody these two button branchers have the same parent which is this button right here. Okay so these two button branchers have the same parent. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, um, okay, do they have the same parent? Does the, the brancher tra uh, dot transform dot parent have the same parent as my transform? Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a button brancher reference to the brancher's uh, button brancher script, and then I'm going to access that button brancher's buttons, and I'm going to destroy all of them, and then I'm going to clear that button brancher's buttons, um, similar to how we do up here. Okay, so it's a similar thing. We're just destroying that specific button branchers buttons instead of this ones. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I, I tried to explain it the best I could. If you guys need any clarification on that method, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. All right, but moving forward, after we do all of our, our clearing and our tidying up, we're going to finally be able to spawn our buttons. So what I do is I, I look at the button reference array that holds all of the prefabs, and then I say game object B equals instantiate button refs at I, Okay, because remember we're in a loop. 
So I'm instantiating each button, and then what I'm doing is I'm setting the the button's parent equal to the transform. Transform is the current button branch that the script is attached to. So each button branch's buttons are going to have uh, are going to be children. Um, okay, and so after I do that, I set the position equal to the transform position. So initially, the buttons are all going to be spawned on top of the button brancher. The next thing I do is I check the reveal style uh, to see if I need to fade the buttons. If I want to fade the buttons, so if any of the reveal styles are fade, then I need to set the color of the components to, um, to be transparent. So what I do is I access the image component and I access the text components of the buttons and I set their color alpha, their color alpha value to zero. All right, so that's what I'm doing here, and I'm checking to see if uh, if text is a component of the of the button. By default, every button is going to have a text, but um, some buttons won't have text components. Um, now, for the most part, and pretty much 99 percent of the time, the button is going to have an image component, so I don't really want to check for that, or I don't care to check for that. Okay, so again, all this is doing is it if if the reveal styles are going to be fading. I'm just setting the components colors to um, to be transparent so they can be ready for fading. Okay, and then the, finally the last thing I do is I add the buttons to the buttons list. Okay, so after we do this, after we have all of the buttons that we need to work with in our buttons list, we can finally uh, determine how it is that we want to animate the buttons. Do we want to slide them out or do we want to rotate them around the button brancher uh, circularly? Okay, and then what so if we look back at our update method, we have four main methods. We're going to reveal linearly normal, reveal linearly fade, reveal circular normal, and reveal circular fade. And so I'm going to be talking about these four methods of animating our buttons uh, in the next few tutorials. That's going to end this tutorial, though, where I told you how you can spawn your buttons. Hopefully it was helpful to you guys. If you liked the tutorial, please drop a like for us. Uh, those always help us out, so we know that we're doing the right thing. Uh, but as always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial, and thank you so much for watching.